Well, the 19th Amendment was ratified on August the 18th, 1920, and it finally gave women the right to vote. My next guest and her daughter have written this wonderful children's book. It's called Camilla Can Vote, and it's about the history of women's suffrage and the importance of voting. Please welcome back to our show, one of our favorites and the co-author of the book, Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn. <laughs> Senator, welcome back. Thank you, it's a delightful to be with you. Well, we're happy, even if we have to have a limited audience, we're delighted we have one and they're making up for the folks who didn't get to come. Yes, indeed. It's hard for me to believe that it's been a hundred years yes since women had the right to vote, it's even harder to believe that for so long in the early part of American history, women were not considered capable of voting. It's astounding to think about that. And believe it or not, the fight for women getting the right to vote started in 1848 in Seneca Falls, New York, and finished on August 18, 1920 in Nashville, Tennessee at the state capitol. And, and that was one of the many things that I learned from reading this delightful book. I can't wait to read it to my grandchildren because oh, it's, it's a fun book, but it, yes. it's a historical uh, book of, of what you just said. And, and one of the fascinating things, there were 72 years between the time they first started working on women having the right to vote until it happened. And there were 72 steps up the staircase of the Tennessee, Tennessee Capitol. That's right. What a cool little piece of history. Isn't that just such a cool piece of history? And of course, Susan B. Anthony was an abolitionist, a pro-life crusader, and she really was the one who started to push this. And the 19th Amendment in our nation's history is actually called the Susan B. Anthony Amendment. And it is amazing to me that these women who started this never saw it come to fruition but they were so committed to it that they continued that fight. And it was grandmothers and mothers and daughters all working together. It was a multi-generational campaign and it was carried out with such civility. They would meet for tea in the <laughs> afternoon. Of course they would. <laughs> and plan what they were going to do. They had suffragist clubs and they would meet over tea. And then when they came to Nashville, the summer of 1920 and Carrie Chapman Catt was leading this fight. They had what is known as the War of the Roses. And I bet a lot of people have heard about the War of the Roses. Well, if you were a pro-suffragist, you wore a yellow rose. If you were anti-suffrage, you wore a red rose. So as it boiled down to that final day, the yellow roses won the fight and women got the right to vote. The fascinating final vote was that one of the uh, legislators yes. was not going to vote for it until he got an interesting note. That was a story I'd never heard before. You've got to tell us about that. Yes, this is so amazing. This young legislator, Harry T. Byrne, who was from Nyota, Tennessee, the youngest member of the Tennessee General Assembly at 24 years of age, he received a note from his suffragist mother, <laughs> Miss Feb, it was her name. And Miss Feb wanted her son, as she said in the letter, that she wanted him to not hold them in doubt, that he should help Miss Cat put the rat in ratification, <laughs> to be a good boy and vote for suffrage. So she sent him that note. And so he did what all young boys and young men should do. <laughs> and they listened to their mother. And yes, he indeed. took off the red rose, he put on the yellow rose, and it was a 48 to 48 tie in the Tennessee House. And he got that instruction from his mother. He obeyed his mother and he changed his vote and the vote was won and women received the right to vote. The, 30, the 19th Amendment 
was ratified and Tennessee was the 36th state. So it's a great story. It is. You know, yes. here we are in the very place where women were finally given the right to vote after 72 years of struggling for it. Yes. Again, it's just hard for me to get my arms around the fact that uh, there was ever a time in American history where people thought that women shouldn't be able to vote. I mean, now we have, obviously, you're a United States Senator, before that a Congresswoman. You, you've had an extraordinary career politically. I've often said, Senator, that if it weren't for, in my case, the Republican women, I would have never been elected to anything. They did all the work. They honestly did. The Republican women were the ones who did all the work. The guys wrote checks, the women did the work. And that's really... Uh, yes, and you know, Governor, one of the stories I think through that weaves through this is the story of courage and commitment of these women to hang with this fight yeah. when the odds were stacked against them. And see, they were pushing to get a vote and they had no vote. They had no representation at all. They had to go create that. But they were dedicated, they were committed, they were gracious, they were polite, they were appreciative. They realized that this was not going to come easy. They didn't they burn anything down. They didn't it, burn did they? a single thing. Didn't so. throw a single brick through a window. You know, no. I can't let you go without talking about the fact that you have a co-author in this, somebody yes. you know fairly well, Mary Morgan Ketchell, who happens to be your daughter. I yes. gotta know, did she bring the idea to you? Did you take it to her? How did this collaboration come My about? fabulously brilliant daughter had this idea and brought it to me. And she knew this story growing up and she said she had always been so inspired because she could vote for her mother and her mother was breaking barriers. So during my swearing in, when we were telling the story of Tennessee history and she was watching these children be so absorbed in this story, a couple of months later she said, Mom, this needs to be a children's book because, and my daughter has two little boys. She said, but there are not children's historical fiction books that tell stories that are historically accurate. Hmm. And this is one that children need to know and appreciate. It's very vivid. Uh, your imagination can run with it. So she is both, uh, a history, a student of history, and she is incredibly creative. So this is how Camilla Can Vote came to be. Well, as the senator from Tennessee, you're the only person who ought to write this book since the, uh, the, the entire amendment to give women the right to vote happened right here, right here in the Nashville area. Senator, it's a wonderful book. I can't wait to read it to my grandchildren and uh, they're gonna love it. I loved it. It's a wonderful story with lots of surprises that I didn't know about. And we thank you so much for coming and tell uh, Mary Morgan, we'd love to see her one of these days as well. Absolutely, thank you so much.